Attention, attention, all hands, we have a leak. I wonder if that's the sound that was made in Take Two's offices whenever the leaks for uh, uh, Grand Theft Auto 6 happened. Mm -hmm. And they were just like, they were just like, they were like, wait, you mean we're not going to be able to monetize the, monetize the, the, the leaked trailer or the leaked footage? Like, uh, no, sir, that's why it's a leak. It's like, well, you're useless. You're fired. We need to monetize this somehow. How can we monetize this? Should have done this whenever you were doing it. Oh, right, the... <laughs> God. So, yeah. When games get leaked. Oh. So, games getting leaked is nothing new. I mean, for the longest time, a lot of people were unsure of, like, of, like, uh, were unsure of, like, some games even existing. And then there were leaks that were made. And it was like, oh, turns out this game sort of, kind of was made. But wasn't finished. I just like Star Wars 1313, which was being developed by a lot of the people who worked on the Uncharted franchise. But when Disney bought LucasArts, they basically completely just destroyed the project and said, Nah, everyone else just sit idly by and don't develop anything. I remember hearing at one point, I forgot what it was now, but there was at one point a sequel that was basically mostly developed for a game that I really liked that apparently just got cancelled and never put out and I was kind of like, oh, this sucks. I know Star Fox 2 got that treatment. Yeah, I think that might might have been that. Star Fox 2 was basically done. They were written, like, all they had to do was a little bit more playtesting and bug fixes and the game was good. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you can actually get it as an emu uh, a ROM on an emulator oh, now. Oh, yeah, I've got it. I've got it, and it it plays pretty good. It's just, damn, that could have been the swan song for the for the SNES, one of the greatest consoles of all time, hands down. But <clears throat> all that being said, though, you know, there's also been leaks that ruined games for some people. It didn't ruin the game for me. But when the leaks turned out to be true, I was just like, well, that puts a damper on things. The Last of Us 2. I tried my damnedest to stay away from the leaks, to do everything I could, but unfortunately, uh, it's very difficult to stay away from some things. Especially when that's all people want to talk about. <laughs> But anyway, uh, the Act Man is here to inform us of uh, certain leaks that happen. Maybe some of them will jog my memory, and maybe there'll be some I've never heard of before. Might as well uh, find out and see which ones he's going to mention. Here we go. This is the Act Man. Picture this. You are one of 2,100 people who've been working diligently for five years, developing a highly anticipated sequel to a video game most would consider to be one of the greatest of all time. For five years, you've poured blood, sweat, and tears into your work, hoping to make a sequel that's worthy in the eyes of your fans. You are driven by passion, but the fear of disappointing your audience convinces you to make sacrifices most people shouldn't. The hours you work have become unsustainable, detrimental to your health. And yet you are so close to the finish line, you can almost taste victory, that vacation you so desperately need, and the payoff you deserve for the years you slaved away in pursuit of something greater than yourself. And then one day, this image appears online. What the Jesus. fuck is that? Okay. Yeah. Oh. And somehow this becomes a permanent part of your legacy. What's up everybody? This is the Act Man here. And today I wanna ask, what happens when video games get leaked? 
Well, at best, nobody believes the leak until the game actually comes out. And as we used to say on a basketball court, no blood, no foul. At worst, if you somehow manage to conjure the perfect storm of ingredients like Naughty Dog, then potentially you miss out on millions of dollars and thousands of man hours will forever be tainted by said leak. I genuinely can't think of any other meme template that has as many edits as the four horsemen of the meme apocalypse. Sorry, Link. Man has always pursued secret knowledge and sought to share it with the world. But like Icarus, sometimes man burns himself getting too close to the forbidden fruit or forbidden sun. I mean, whatever, you get the analogy. Sometimes leakers oh, yeah. are just people super passionate about the game and they want to play it early for themselves. And other times leakers will hold the source code of a game hostage and demand a fucking ransom. Yeah. I don't fully understand how exactly games get leaked, but like most people, I imagine the process looks something like... <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to measure how much financial damage is caused by the- I just love the glance back at the camera in that clip. <laughs> it's so fucking funny to me. Gosh. Premature release of something. It can be astronomical or have literally no effect. And this is why we have certain laws and regulations in place. Like when companies want content creators or news outlets to reveal certain parts of an upcoming game, they make us sign NDAs, yeah. non-disclosure agreements. I signed an NDA way back when I got an early copy of Halo Wars 2. I've signed a few copies, or a few NDAs, for some things. I've only ever had to sign one. That was just the generic, uh, all-encompassing Primordic Studios NDA. Which, no, that one's fine. That it's one... It's pretty much just like, yeah, don't share projects that we're working on here unless you're told you can and stuff like that uh the nda that i signed i signed the first one i ever signed was whenever i signed up for the mcn uh, full screen and they basically said yeah any inner working discussions that you hear or are a part of uh you're not allowed to uh discuss it with anyone else so i'm like well shit okay and it basically said Microsoft reserves the right to sue me for all the money I will ever have if I should be an asshole and start posting things I shouldn't. I don't get many NDAs, but I do not violate them. Unlike Dan Allen Gaming, who got caught running a sock oh. puppet account that was leaking info on upcoming games. Yeah, that one. I read about that one. Oh. He is going to be in legal trouble and legal battles. Probably for the next 10 years. He's going to be so busy going back and forth to court that it'll be years before he actually serves any potential jail time. And he did this for clout, for the thrill of it. Even made up leaks about Silent Hill and Metal Gear Solid. Like, come on, man. Obviously, if a content creator violates an NDA, um... It can result in severe consequences and, you know, maybe even a fucking lawsuit. I suppose he owned up to his mistakes and didn't try to hide everything, but there is an aspect of thrill seeking when it comes to leaks. Who can be the first one to reveal something secret? Leaks can range from something as small as a keychain revealing the next Assassin's Creed game, Odyssey, or a retailer putting up unannounced games for sale on Early. their website. Now, yeah. sometimes the leaker is an individual, an outside source. Maybe a company is just careless and they make a mistake. Leaks can happen because of outdated security, malicious insiders, data mining, phishing scams, or it could just be as simple as some guy making the ballsy decision to steal 67 copies of Starfield from a warehouse and then upload that gameplay to YouTube and post a video of himself calling it a good game while smoking a blunt. All right. <laughs> no offense, man. <laughs> That's a good game. Today yeah. You done goofed. Good job. Good job. Today we're going to look at some of the most notorious, infamous, and hilarious leaks in video game history to see what all we can learn from them. So let's grab our wrench, tighten that bolt, and find out what happens when games get leaked. But before we jump into it, check this out. My TV can bend now. This video is sponsored by oh, LG and their OLED Flex T- Oh my God, you really got one of those? <laughs> Dude, lucky you. 
TV. This is honestly the best TV I have ever had or used. I genuinely feel like a fool for not investing in a better TV sooner. If you really want to ball out and upgrade your gaming and television viewing experience, you need to check out the LG OLED Flex. While it is a TV, it can also function as a massive chonker of a monitor. With this behemoth, you wouldn't need two monitors. It's got a multi-view feature so you could pull up YouTube and play games on the same screen. And of course, you can curve the screen inwards for an immersive gaming experience. The OLED Flex has a whopping four HDMI and four USB ports. And the LG OLED is so advanced that its remote can function like a freaking Wii controller. Also, most TVs have pretty awful speakers that require a sound bar to sound decent. Not the OLED Flex. This thing has a built-in speaker that genuinely sounds great. Now, I'm no TV cal- Well, LG's, I, I know this is a sponsorship, but we have an LG TV and the audio we get from the TV itself is really good. But even I can tell that the picture is amazing. The video you're seeing doesn't do it justice. The Flex has tons of options for color grading, specific modes for game optimization, or cinematic modes for movies. So if you're thinking about treating yourself right and upgrading your gaming and television experience, look no further than the LG OLED Flex. And if you click the link in the description and pinned comment, you'll be able to check it out. Thank you, LG, for sponsoring this video. And now for something completely different. I think there's no better place to start than this screenshot. Oh, <laughs> Probably going to trigger a core memory in Halo fans. I'm going somewhere with this, by the way. I saw this fucking thing on YouTube in forums claiming to be a leaked image of Halo 3. And amongst the Halo fan base, this image has become something of a mystery. Turns out it's just a render in an early version of Gary's mod. And the creature is from a game called Gunman Chronicles. If you're a Halo fan, you may have also seen this gift before. This is from a video titled Halo 4 trailer leaked gameplay footage. As you may have noticed, uh, this is not the trailer for Halo 4. It is a top tier shit post. High quality troll videos there? like this were extremely rare back in the day. There was so much clickbait on YouTube back in the 2000s, 2010s. Most of it was dog shit. Thousands of people would get suckered into clicking videos like this, hoping to see Cortana's new cheeks and being thoroughly disappointed. I'm somewhat disappointed. And it was during this era of clickbait and fake leaks that people became very skeptical. And that would be the perfect time for one of the most legendary leaks to be revealed. The Halo 4 VHS barn leak tape. Yes, that, that is a string of real words I just said. Halo 4 was set to release on November 6, 2012, which it did. But on May 26th, a video was posted to YouTube by the user X420 Skid Bloods. I know, I know. <laughs> but trust me, it gets better. <laughs> the video was titled Halo 4 Beta HD 720 VHS. <laughs> 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 You get? I hope so. Wait. That's odd. <laughs> Shit. Okay. There we go. Okay. VHS tapes hadn't been relevant for like nine years at this point. What do you What do you mean, Halo 4 Beta VHS release? The video was anything but HD. Whoever posted this had somehow gained access to a private build of Halo 4 six months before release. They had recorded gameplay, transferred that footage to a VHS tape, set up a CRT TV outside amidst a pile of hay, and with a video camera, they recorded real actual leaked gameplay of halo 4. that to is any aspiring trolls watching this video right now take some notes <laughs> you are about to learn from a master yeah. this video showed roughly nine minutes of halo 4 multiplayer revealing things like assassinations the new battle rifle design ordnance drops the railgun promethean vision sprint with the power of hindsight, we know this is Halo 4 gameplay, but put yourself back in the shoes of someone in 2012. Amidst all these other fake leaks, you look at this one and it looks like the fakest shit you've ever seen. And that's what's so awesome about it. You can, you can barely tell 
what the hell you're even supposed to be looking at it's like a parody of every fake picture of bigfoot the loch ness monster every fake leak post on 4chan all combined into one glorious shit post parody there isn't even audio of the game itself just it's just a jarbled mess of what you want to hear more of that crap no, no. Have a nice day you know i see on my game of you on my game yeah. It's funny to look back on old articles and forums about this because people seem just as perplexed about it as we are today. This leak was so bizarre that many speculated it was an elaborate marketing stunt by 343 and Microsoft. <laughs> At least people thought that until BAM! This, ladies and gentlemen, is what we call a dead giveaway. Although the original channel and video are long since deleted, a re-upload still exists on YouTube. Apparently, the person responsible for the Halo 4 barn leak ended up getting a job working at Microsoft as part of their security team. <laughs> who better to hire than the person who broke through your security? Yep. Yeah, I mean, that's one way to fill out a job application. Due to its shit posty nature, the Halo 4 VHS barn leak didn't really have any effect on the release of Halo 4, and today it's relatively forgotten. However, it remains one of the most baffling, incredible leaks in video game history. With a story so ridiculous, it's still hard to believe. But what about a more recent leak? Everyone's talking about, uh, what, what, what's that game? Uh... Grand Auto Theft 6? Are they gonna become violent just by playing Grand Auto Theft? 90 <laughs> videos of GTA 6 leaked online. Source code also leaked. You know they found the kid who did this, so I'm just saying it, he's probably gonna end up like Epstein. You know, if people keep leaking shit for GTA 6, it's just gonna make it take longer. Like, come the fuck on, man. Don't do this. Don't do this to us. Arian Curtez from Oxford, who is autistic, was a key member of internal gang Lapras Dollar Sign. Doctors deemed him unfit to stand trial due to his severe autism. Sorry, son, you are just too goddamn autistic. Here, stay in the hospital for the rest of your life. Wow. Wow, dude. What? Apparently this kid uh, has been violent. Under custody, he hacked into Rockstar right after he was arrested for a previous cyber crime. That's he says if he is let go, he will go right back to doing more cyber crime. I say lock his ass up or feed him to the sharks. But back in the summer of 22, Arian and uh, one of his friends- He's been ordered to not be allowed to have anything that would allow him to get online. Yeah. And like, as soon as they took their eyes off of him for a minute, like he went and figured something out and like did more hacks. <laughs> like I was just kind of like, you know what? To an extent, I respect it. <laughs> I respect it, but at the same time. Dude's like a character from a movie. <laughs> here's the thing. If he would leak, <clears throat> he's leaking stuff from like a, you know, a, a big massive conglomerate. Okay. All well and good. Don't give a shit about that. Very moment he starts leaking personal information, aka my personal information. Yeah, then it's then, not, no longer respectable. At oh, that point. then I'm gonna introduce him to a little thing called blunt force trauma, and I'm gonna break his fucking knees. For now, it's just and like, his fingers. It's crazy to me to imagine the kind of dude that could probably walk into McDonald's, wait until the staff is not looking, and then hack like the IRS with their cash register Jesus. <laughs> that's, what be it, that's what it sounds like he can do as far yeah. as i've heard <laughs> honestly i'd turn him loose on like on like malicious rings like 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 pedo rings and stuff like that mm -hmm. it's like somebody needs to offer him a job like be like dude if you could take down finding this, certain information and stuff dude if you could take these people down and like give us the information on them dude you don't understand we will let you literally do whatever the fuck you want and we won't stop you like that's how i would be at least there's a literally like they the i feel like the fbi should get off uh get in contact with him you know or be like look obviously we can't let you go to just hack whatever you want but how would you like to come hack stuff we want you to hack for us exactly you'd probably be like okay yeah 
had a death wish because they leaked all the info on GTA 6. Its location, its female protagonist, the Bonnie and Clyde theme, it showed pre-alpha gameplay. They leaked everything they found and demanded a ransom. You know, the thing I hate most about leaks like this is that we all didn't get to experience that moment of watching the reveal trailer and have that be the moment where we saw and learned all this stuff, that it was gonna take place in Vice City, yada yada. Imagine if E3 were still around and they dropped this trailer there. Can you imagine the reactions? Yeah, be pretty hype. <sighs> I never went to E3. This leak allegedly cost Rockstar $5 million and thousands of hours of staff time because they had to change their entire marketing strategy over the next year. But this wouldn't be the only major GTA 6 leak. In what is probably one of the most baffling leaks ever, a random TikTok account emerged and started sharing short clips and screenshots from GTA 6. And to I prove saw their legitimacy, they also shared this photo. <laughs> oh, you dumb dumb. Who is that? It's one of the lead developers. And they shared a photo of them taking a selfie with him? Basically, from what I understand, this kid was friends with this guy's kid, and he came over to hang out, and he basically stole a bunch of shit. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, this is Aaron yeah, If you Garber. cover your face like that, by the way, he's still going to be able to figure out who you are. I think, no, the act man covered his face because he's, oh, okay. he's underage, I think. Head of development at Rockstar North, who has been with the company for 27 years. Now, it is possible that this account is simply posing as the son or friend or whatever of Aaron. But if not, and if I'm Aaron, that kid's going to live like fucking Harry Potter at the Dursleys <laughs> until he moves out. Wake up, Potter! We're going to the zoo! I, th I think it's hilarious, the idea that your son just put your job in jeopardy for fucking TikTok clout, as sad as that is, I do think that's funny. Rockstar just can't catch a break when it comes to leaks. The day before the trailer was supposed to come out, someone leaked it on Twitter. And what an appropriate username. They did it to promote Bitcoin. That's, that's kind of that's kind of gay, but hey. And this text you see was on screen for the entire trailer. I guess everything worked out because Rockstar posted the official trailer like 30 minutes after this Twitter post. It got, you know, a couple million views, no big deal. But unlike The Last of Us 2, the leaks around GTA 6 don't seem to be creating any huge negative reaction from fans. If anything, people seem to be sympathizing with Rockstar and giving them even more support. For now, the leaks don't seem to be having any major consequences. The same cannot be said for the Insomniac leak. In this day and age, it's extremely oh, difficult yeah, to keep things secret when it comes to video games and new releases. It's become harder and harder for developers to surprise us in a way that's natural. Like, imagine if StarCraft II had been leaked before it was revealed, and we never got this glorious moment in Korea. Twenty twenty three was a wild year for leaks. Microsoft had a huge list of upcoming games revealed, content plans. But the Insomniac fiasco is really terrible. On December twelfth, the hacker known as 4chan at I mean, the ransomware group known as Rysida announced that it had stolen 1.63 terabytes of data from Insomniac and they were auctioning it off for 50 bitcoins. What's up with the fucking bitcoins, man? When it's untraceable, dude. That's why. It's the only reason. It's not for cloud or anything like that. It's because it's untraceable and it's... It's easily tradable online nobody bought it naturally they posted it online for all to see and this is one of the more malicious hacks and leaks it does irreparable damage to insomniac in their upcoming projects i think it revealed like a 10-year release plan they had yeah which okay i knew about this i heard that this was you know gonna be holiday season 2025 this we knew was coming out, but we're still like not sure 100% where the development is on it. Them going back and doing another Ratchet and Clank. Okay. But I don't know. I mean, and I'm kind of surprised like they just put out Spider Man 2 
But that's listing Spider-Man 3 as dropping before the next Ratchet and Clank. Well, yeah. I mean, let's see. Projects. I think it revealed I guess like Spider-Man's the more successful of the franchises. But... Well, especially now. I mean, you yeah. gotta think, Rift dude. Rift Apart was kick-ass, though. Well, no, I mean, uh, there's nothing against the Ratchet and Clank games. It's just, by comparison, I think Sp the Spider-Man games sold, like, four to five times as many. And there's nothing wrong, and, and there's nothing wrong with them focusing on Spider-Man. I want them to focus on Spider-Man. I like the Spider-Man games. Also, I like the fact that they're doing a Venom game... And I wonder what they're going to do with that. A 10-year release plan they had? These files showed everything you can think of. Pre-alpha gameplay, internal design documents, employee information. Many have called the Insomniac leak unprecedented. And I'd agree. A lot of leaks are focused on revealing stuff with the goal of exciting people. It's still illegal. But this is an example of a leak focused on hurting people. Done for the oldest reason but in the why? world. Money. We yeah. just need money. But let's lighten the mood. Damn it, in 2007, Dutch. the world was amped for the upcoming release of Halo 3, and Microsoft sent out pre-release versions dubbed the Epsilon build to employees for testing. At this point, Halo 3 was 99.9% .9 complete. But three weeks before release, a 17-year-old who went by the gamertag Scar, somehow obtained the Epsilon version of the game and was able to play it for six hours. Microsoft caught wind of this and laid the fucking banhammer down on his face. Scar's Xbox Live account was banned for 9,972 years. <laughs> yes. <laughs> They didn't feel like typing a specific date, so they just... 999. Nine, nine. Let's see, the end of the year on... And that'll do it. I will say this. I got early access to Halo 3 because I worked at a... I worked at a movie gallery, which, you know, for those of you youngins out there, that's a movie rental place. And we got Halo a week early. And I remembered I got it that week early and I told and they said you can have it out, you can play it, you can do whatever you want. You just can't you just you know can't sell it to anybody and you can't you know you, you know just the regular stuff. And I remembered I plugged in I I put him in my Xbox, I pushed the tray close. Then all of a sudden, it starts up, and the opening cutscene happens, where Chief falls from the ship as it's entering the atmosphere, and as soon as Master Chief flies by over top of my head, over top of the camera's head, the game freezes, and my Xbox red rings. Remember what I told you would have happened if you hadn't got any further and earned any achievements on it? Exactly, that probably would have happened to me. Mm -hmm. And I think I I played on it a little bit later, like about because uh, I I had to send my Xbox in, but instead I used my I used my cousin's Xbox because he had one too, <clears throat> and we played through basically all of Halo Three within like two days. I mean, we went nonstop, dude. We were like we were de we were dedicated to beating that before the uh, before like the game actually released, and we did, and thankfully neither of our accounts got banned. So all's well. <coughs> and he is. Oh, are you cold? No, I got my in one of these pockets. Oh, okay. Nicotine. This one's not doing anything for me anymore. I just felt myself looking for a vape that's not sitting here. Is that going to go? Oh, God. I heard it. Wait. There it is. Uh. All right. 
You all good? Mm -hmm. All right. Until the year 10,000, man really just said, wake me when you need me. This screenshot must have been one of the funniest things to wake up to. It's like when criminals get 10 life sentences plus 50 years or whatever. Just an absurd punishment. But how did he get caught? Well, he kept his status online so everyone could see he was playing Halo 3 before it even came out. You didn't have to cut me Galaxy Brain Move, yep. Scar's account had 60,000 gamer score. That is a heavy price paid, but... Imagine the clout you'd have the next day in school. <laughs> Thankfully, Scar didn't seem interested in leaking Halo 3 to the public. If he did, he might have faced a much more harsh punishment than losing his account and his console. There were several other leaks around Halo 3, but the absurdity of Microsoft's reaction to this one made it hilarious. There's so many examples we could dive into. I mean, Gears of War 3, Doom 3, the French version of Halo 2 being released a month early. The Smash Bros. 4 roster being completely leaked. Yeah. But if I don't finish this video soon, then it'll get leaked. Amidst all of the more famous leaks, Half-Life 2 is definitely one of the more interesting. Valve was already behind on their deadlines trying to make Half-Life 2 the perfect sequel it would eventually become. But on September 19th, the source code for Half-Life 2 was posted online along with a playable version of the game. Gabe realized he and his team had been compromised. This was one of, if not the darkest days in Valve's history. I had people in the company coming to me and saying, you know, are we gonna go out of business? You know, what does this mean? Uh, are we ever gonna ship Half-Life 2 now? Gabe had heard over 4 million people had accessed the source code. That could translate to 4 million fewer copies of the game getting sold. In desperation, he turned to his community, telling them the truth. Despite delaying Half-Life 2 and upsetting the community before, they had Valve's back. They understood and did all they could to track down any leads. Despite their help and that of the FBI, months passed without any info on who was responsible. Valve was demoralized. Development had slowed down even further and all looked hopeless. Until Gabe Newell received an unusual email. A German teenager named Axel Gembe claimed responsibility, showing proof, and said he was remorseful. In truth, he idolized Gabe Newell and Valve so much that he asked Gabe for a job. <laughs> and this is when our boy Gabe played him like a fiddle. They set up a phone interview with the goal of getting Gembe to admit his crimes, and they were going to fly him to Seattle where the FBI would arrest him. But the German police got to him first. Damn. Gembe said he had taken the source code and shared it with the friend, and that friend had posted it online. It's anyone's guess whether or not this is true, but Valve obviously doesn't have the best record when it comes to meeting their deadlines. And <laughs> oh. Valve time and actual time. Yeah. And it's only the gotten worse. The Half Life was supposed to be November 1997, and instead it was November 19, 1998. Oh uh, yeah. Release of Team Fortress 2 was supposed to be soon in 1998, and instead released in 2007. <laughs> release of Half Life 2 was supposed to be September 30, 2003, instead of November 16, 2004. Half Life Episode 3 was supposed to release. In Christmas of 2007. Yeah, it's been canceled though. And the game, and the game is dead. Took out back and shot in the head like old Yeller. Like availability of uh, a release of each Half-Life 2 episodes. It was supposed to be every three months. <laughs> Turned into every few years. <laughs> you know, I haven't seen a release schedule like that since the rebuild of Evangelion. What was supposed to take Hideki Anno from the summer of 2008 until uh, early 2010 like hold on just a little side note here there it is so it was supposed to be or I'm sorry 2007 to 2009 2007, 2009, 2012, 2021. 
14 years! Jesus. Oh. And as an Evangelion fan, I can't tell you the agony. The sheer, unadulterated pain I felt every time Anno came out with an announcement and said, Oh, the next part's going to be delayed. Especially the one, you know, Evangelion 3 and 3.1, and uh, 3 plus point one or 1.0. Like, nine years, dude. Oh, well. Yes, that's that. And hardcore fans like Axel were hungry for details and willing to go to extreme lengths to satiate their appetite. Because Axel was fully compliant, expressed remorse, turned himself in, told the police officers everything without a lawyer present, he was able to get off easy and was sentenced to only two years probation. While it's unfortunate that the source code did get posted publicly, it seems that Axel was motivated by his love for Half-Life and not something more sinister. Luckily for everyone, Half-Life 2 went on to be a major commercial and critical yeah. success, and the source code leak didn't seem to derail that success at all. Finally, we arrive at what some would describe the so biggest much of a leak. Success in fact that I have replayed it in the past couple of years and it's still fun. Yes. Video game history. There the is. Last of Us 2. The first title was a landmark for video games. It took storytelling and presentation to a whole new level See, back I in 2013. I didn't even know that Last of Us 2 got leaked. My whole yeah. problem was like, it had been out like a week and then I got it immediately spoiled for me what happens early into the game. And when I saw that, I was just like, well, they just lost money from me because I'm not going to buy it if that's what's going to fucking happen in it. And then come to find out, that wasn't the worst thing that happens in it. It's just not a great game. It is it's not a great story. Okay. The gameplay is supposedly really, really oh, good. Oh, the gameplay is amazing. I will okay. say this. The, the gameplay story is, is why I played the first one. The gameplay is a solid 10. It is easily one of the most well done, well thought out, well like well designed games I've ever played. Story gets a four out of ten. And the second one's just a freaking you know railroaded story that you have no agency in. So. Well no no no. The sec well the second one, dude, that's my thing, is like the story for the second one's like a four out of ten. The story of the first game is easily like an eight or a nine out of ten. And the gameplay is another ten out of ten. Both like both games play really good but the problem with the last of us part two is that it is longer than it needs to be it focuses on it it, it tries to be subversive with its storytelling and then basically cock smacks you anytime that you try like anytime so some like anytime you try to say well in terms of narrative development that doesn't really work it's just like it's subversive it just means you don't understand i'm like no that's not how that works if someone doesn't find, like, okay, if someone doesn't find something interesting, then, then why do I have to go through the labor of trying to find it in, to be interesting? I mean, look, everyone out there is entitled to their opinion. And I have my, I have my thoughts to back up this opinion. This isn't just an opinion I got because of what I read on the internet. It's an opinion that I have because I played through the entire fucking game. Anyway, sorry. So expectations were high for its part two sequel. For a lot of people, it was their most anticipated game release. So naturally, people craved information about it. On April 6, 2020, some huge plot points were spoiled and posted on 4chan. Many of them turned out to be accurate, but this could have easily been looked at as just another fake leak. That is, until April 27th, when the mother of all leaks was My posted. Birthday. Over an hour of gameplay and cutscenes were posted to YouTube, confirming much of what the 4chan leak had said. With spoilers so massive and, and crazy, it was impossible to avoid them online. Hackers revealed jaw-dropping twists that left the community very divided. 
I found one comment on this Reset Era thread that said, Isn't it a little ironic to have a game with a very transparent <coughs> theme about the cycle of revenge ultimately be sabotaged in what seems like an act of vengeance? The official story trailer also seemed to indirectly confirm what was shown in the leaks. Of course, the copyright claims validate that too. But to this day, comments and likes are still disabled on the story trailer. Yeah. Sony's response to the leaks was to change the release date to June 19th after previously delaying it and recently... Oh, sorry. Just readjusted myself a little bit. Delaying it indefinitely because of COVID. Well, they've seen the game already. Fuck it. It's too late to change anything. The cat was out of the bag on a story, but one big question remained. Who? Who could have done this? We never found out. I mean, Sony said they knew who posted these leaks and confirmed it wasn't anyone associated with Naughty Dog or Sony, but we don't know who they are. Naughty Dog had been dealing with Crunch, and there were theories of a disgruntled employee taking revenge. But I guess that's just a theory. A game! <laughs> no. The repercussions for this leak were arguably more severe than any other game leak. Now, it's one thing to kill off a major character that everybody loves in a somewhat controversial way, but to learn about that through a leak and not the media itself, it has to taint your perception of the media in some way. Here's the thing I did not know about... By the way, spoilers for a game that's almost four years old. I did not know that Joel was going to die. I didn't. What you saw whenever I live streamed it was my raw reaction. And after that, I didn't feel like live streaming it anymore. I, I felt like I, I, I wanted to finish the game, but I, did, I didn't want to go through the labor of live streaming while I did it. Because I felt like I wouldn't really have anything to say that would that would make me feel like that would make merit me posting it what you saw was the real thing and here's what i'll say i can imagine it would taint your your like indulgence of the game i'm not saying i i'm de i think it definitely would it does <laughs> but Ugh. It does. I heard it without playing the game. Like, I saw the scene without playing the game, and I was like, I'm never playing this. I was like, that's so fucking stupid. What a trash way of writing a story. Also, not only that, but the story trailer thing that he was talking about, the fact that they l deliberately lie in the game trailer that Joel is still alive at that point in the game that they're referencing is just like insane to me. I can understand killing Joel, but killing him in that way? No. That to me is just a perfectly fine waste of a character and a character arc. No, really what made me decide I wasn't playing it is when I heard what the actual ending was. Oh. Where it's like, oh, Oh, revenge is not best to take whenever something like this happens. And I'm just like, why don't we let the player decide at that point? Because That's the point. Uh, I can't Choice. think of a more unsatisfying ending to that. Choice. That's the thing. You're basically eliminating the choice for us. And it's just, it's basically you saying, oh, we know better. Fuck off. Right? Spoiling something people have been looking forward to for a very long time will no doubt leave a bad taste in their mouth. But that taste seems to have persisted through the game's launch and even today. Maybe people would have responded the Wait, Commander Carl? I agree with this. Nah, man. The game had such a contrived story. Yes, gameplay was fantastic, of course. But the story was just long, drawn-out, lame-ass revenge tale. Yes! If they gave the player the choice, yes! To actually kill Abby at the end, yes! That would have at least made it a little bit better. Honestly, this... Yes! Thank you, Commander Carl. Jesus. Not only do I like your reload, your reload, your tactical reload videos, I love you for that take. Mm -hmm. That is a ballin' ass 
Like, big thumbs up take. Jesus. Basically everything we were just saying. Yes. <laughs> seems to have persisted through the game's launch and even today. Maybe people would have responded the same way even if it hadn't been spoiled. I mean, everyone seems to have loved Half-Blood Prince. Say what you will ah, about the story, true. the characters, and all that. I think we can all agree that for the developers working hard on this game, on this vision, whether it's a vision you agree with, this really sucks balls. I mean, sure, we, we got some fantastic memes out of it, but it's unfortunate that Naughty Dog didn't get to show their game and their story to the world in the way that they wanted to. There was a huge divide between audience. Oh, but that's the thing. They kind of did. They kind of did get to see or get to show the game as they wanted to. It's just the vast majority of people said, no, we don't like this and critic reviews. Maybe those critics felt more sympathy for Naughty Dog's situation. The game was review bombed on Metacritic, no doubt caused by the plot leaks, but the true mastermind behind this, their identity and what punishments they may have faced are still a mystery. Was it an act of vengeance, elaborate sabotage, or something else? We may never find out. In the end, there's a million things that can happen when games get leaked. It's really hard to predict. Sometimes nothing I know, happens. if it were me, and I was like, wait a minute. I just stumbled across the plot for The Last of Us. Okay, so, personally, if it were me, I would have been like, I'm just going to back away slowly because I don't want to know. You know, I don't want to spoil it for myself, but... Where I the type of guy that didn't care about spoilers, and I was like, let's see what they got, you know? And then I read it, and then uh, that happened. I would, like, with no plans previously to just put this out into the world, I would have been like, man, I'm going to post this everywhere because people got to hear about this bullshit. Know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> also, uh, The Last of Us 2... So the first Last of Us sales numbers, 37 million copies as of December last year. So it's 10 million. 10 million of them are the Last of Us Part 2. So it has sold over two or 10 million. But by comparison to the first one... But not even half of the units sold as the franchise in a row. Yeah. Well. Definitely had an effect. I mean, people would argue, oh, the first one's been out longer, though. Duh. I'm just like, eh, I think there's also a lot of people that don't care to buy the second one after what they heard about it. Yeah. Like they were talking about, oh, The Last of Us 2 Remastered is coming out. You hear that? Crickets. I saw a couple people on Facebook talking about it, but it was only because it was like, this is a shot from The Last of Us 2. This is a shot from The Last of Us 2 Remastered. They're the same picture. Yeah, literally. <laughs> Whereas The Last of Us 2 Remake, actually, I want to play that because the original Last of Us Remake, or the original Last of Us and Last of Us Remastered were good, but then the remake with the engine that they used for The Last of Us 2, I actually want to play that. I want to play yeah, it on I PC. About grabbing that if they ever fix the PC version enough. Yeah. Anyway. Occasionally, it increases hype around a game. Some people leak games because they're passionate fans. Other times, they're part of a criminal cyber hacking organization. <laughs> they can be a misguided YouTuber, a clout chasing son of a developer, a masterful troll. Whatever the case, video game leaks can be extremely damaging to the morale of developers and the success of their product. I think this is why there's such strict punishments for violating NDAs. It's impossible to determine what damage might occur. And while we the consumers might benefit from this secret knowledge, it might be exciting to know things before they're revealed. It's important to remember 
that all knowledge comes at a price so thank you all for watching hope you enjoyed the video leave a like if you did and subscribe to the yank man for more awesome content don't try to download my leaked only fans content because uh, just pay for my real only fans the one that doesn't exist all right everyone that's all i got for today this is the act man signing out peace damn to be honest as long as the plot doesn't get spoiled for me for whatever gets leaked I don't really get why leaks can affect things so badly because I've seen leaks from stuff I was excited about before and it usually just made me more excited for it. So I don't get why there's a whole like fear that like oh no we've been working on details about it leaked like this could ruin it. It's like why? If it's good why would it ruin it? Well. Now, if it gets leaked and it looks bad, I could see that. Like, I could see, like, Grand Theft Auto, you know, Rockstar being concerned that their alpha bits got leaked because they were concerned that people would see that and be like, this is not looking good, but it's alpha, you know? Like, it's not in a state that's meant to be shown off yet. Like, well, it's yeah, that's like... way fucking better. That's like people were talking shit on. about the Insomniac leak and just like, oh, God, did you see how horrible the freaking Wolverine... Uh, game looked like it's still got like two years to go on development. Yeah, here's what I here's what I said though. Like, when's the game due to be released? Two years from now. Okay. Uh, tell me. Uh, whenever you were in the womb, do you think that you were meant to be seen outside of the womb at only two <laughs> months old? I don't think so. I don't it's think so. Like, yeah, you think this. Uh chicken breast I got here that's still pink inside looks like it's looks good to you <laughs> Jesus like no shit it's still in the fucking oven yes oh anyway so that's gonna do it everybody this was the act man with video game leaks uh, if you all enjoyed and you want to see more you know what to do hit that subscribe button ring that bell be sure to check out the act man by clicking his name in the title of the video and until next time, I'm Nate. I'm Nick. Y'all be good people. Peace.